Morning, Scott. Hi, Rocky. Uh, do you mind giving your name and what what you do and where in Salt Lake City? My name is Scott Evans. I own Euro Treasures Antiques here on 6th South and 5th West, right as you get off the freeway. And we've been down here 19 years. I've been, I've had a, a shop in the downtown of Salt Lake for the last 43 years. And we opened up this beautiful warehouse a number of years ago. And uh, we've just been under assault just recently with all of the unhoused population that is just being able to run muck in the neighborhood and uh, we've never seen it this bad. What we'll see today is uh, the situation after a cleanup two days ago and now everybody's back here running amok and doing whatever they want to do with no supervision and uh, no legal responsibility. There's drug dealing, there's illicit activity and sexual uh, acts being performed and People are going to the bathroom wherever they feel. They leave their garbage. We haul out four to eight bags of garbage every single week out of here, which is not my responsibility. And it's not my responsibility to clean up the excrement and all the other things that uh, we're being faced with at the moment. So you've had to clean up human feces on your own property? Every week, every week, sometimes every day. Um, it's, you know, it's not acceptable. Can you it's, describe, it's a health hazard. It's, can you describe the smell right now? Well, if the wind hits you, it just smells like a, like you're standing in a sewer, in a sewer treatment plant or something. It's, you know, it's okay, not let's palatable. let's walk down to your place if we could. Yeah, sure. So, um, this, this is a new encampment right here up against new construction. Right. This is the box, the made from container homes. Supposed to and be providing some additional housing for the lower income folks. But they've had a lot of problems with permitting, et cetera, et cetera, to get the project done. We've got someone living out of their car here. Which is an unlicensed vehicle. No insurance, no anything. So, you see a lot of expensive bicycles outside these yeah, encampments? Yeah. I, I'm saving up to buy a $4,000 bike myself, Rocky, and uh, maybe I can get a deal on one of these instead. It just came out of somebody's garage without permission. None of these cars have insurance. It's all license plates. Uh, I didn't know we'd be filming today, but we came out here yesterday and hauled off six bags of garbage. So it's cleaner than it's been, and the city came through, and normally in the last few weeks, we've had about five times the density that we have right now. And all this garbage here, was it like this when you, say, four or five years ago? No, it was not. No, it was manageable. People did not have a sense of entitlement. You would ask them to move along and explain to them that you're trying to run a business and they would leave and they would not come back. They're not gone more than a half an hour after the police, fire department, and health department come and they're moving right back in after they you know, made a move. And um, you know, there's human feces here that's been sitting here on our back end, one of our back entrances and people you know, peeing all over the place. The garbage. Okay, right. I, I can smell, I can smell human waste right here. Do you smell it? I can smell it. And is this a common thing? It's every day now. We cleaned this up yesterday. People hanging out and doing whatever they wish to do, which is deal drugs and smoke crack and shoot heroin. We had a fellow down here a week ago having a seizure, so I called 911. They wanted me to attend to him, and I said I wasn't able to do that. And by the time uh, the officers and the, and the fire department were able to get here, there was another guy down in the driveway with a needle sticking out of his arm of a heroin overdose, all within a 12-minute period. And did, did authorities do anything? They both refused service, and if they don't want to have medical attention, then there's nothing they can do. 
So no, no police intervention. Police came, fire department came, and nothing was done. The fellows, the seizure stopped, and the other guy crawled up and, and took off running when the officers arrived. But evidence of heroin abuse. The needle was sticking out of his arm. His feces right there. The, you can see it there and, and there. And this is on your business That's property. That's my property. It's my property. And as I say, we've been here in business for many, many years. And Scott, I know you work your heart out. I've, I've well, we feel like we've been an asset to the community and that we've, you know, bring some extra culture and we try to service our clientele base that we've developed over my entire lifetime. Do you, do you live here? I live here part time. I can't have my uh, family here much anymore because it's just too dangerous. I was here last evening and some guy was sleeping up against my garage door, blocking uh, my fire exit, and had to ask him to leave. And this is one day's worth of just trash here. Someone's urinated right here. There's feces that's been on the wall that, well, these are the security lights that they've torn down on multiple occasions. So let me ask you, how do you feel about a city government that has provided no alternative place like a sanctioned encampment and just simply moving these homeless camps from place to place, from down here in front of your business to our parks to under overpasses and just keep moving them along, stirring, stirring the pot but never finding an alternative place so that these encampments will be out of our city. Well, Rocky, you can see the result, and it's not what I—it's not what I think. You can just see the results. You can see it all over the downtown, and then they're spreading out to different parts of the valley. And it's these—these these are not calm people with nowhere to go. Many of them are dangerous. They're involved in dangerous activities, and this administration uh, of late is very unresponsive and it, what's being done it does not work obviously it doesn't work it's creating hazards health hazards it's causing problems with safety it's costing the city in the hundreds of millions of dollars in lost revenue people that just don't want to deal with it and they're not going to come into the downtown the president of the united states came off this freeway the other day there were 38 tents along this the first thing that he saw and then when he left town he drove by him again and you know, I, I saw nothing coming out of that. Have you visit. brought what you see and what you're experiencing to the attention of the mayor's office? I have called the mayor's office on at least 65 occasions. There's absolutely no response. I finally got a hold of an assistant after about the last five months of calling at least once a week. Um, we're calling the police. They do respond on occasion. Um, I think that the police officers would be happy to help out and do their job if there was something that they could and were allowed to do, which they're not allowed to do. And um, So you haven't seen any arrests for any of the Ill illegal conduct that you're seeing here? No. I mean, when I came to work yesterday, some girl was getting beat up on the corner and I didn't even bother to call because I know that nothing's going to happen. Have you seen drug deals go down? And drug the deals. Of the police? People doing a drug deal, handing over a handful of needles along with some other little package. Obviously heroin or meth that they're going to inject. I've watched marijuana deals, which, you know, people smoke pot, I understand that. But I've sat there and watched them counting out the money. And I see them pull up to cars that are parked here that people are living in. They pull up, they go over to the window. They're there for one, two minutes back in their car and they drive off. Well, they're doing a drug deal, right? And they'll do it right in front of, you know, officers and myself, and I videotaped it. It's just, it's rampant. And so, what does this convey to the community and people who want to engage in illegal conduct? Well, you can just, it conveys that you can do just anything you want, and that's okay. And that's not okay. You know, it's not, it's not an example that our children should be able to be a witness to and be able to see and, and be brought up to thinking that you can just, the rules don't matter if you just want to live on the side of the road in a tent and uh, do anything you want, then that's a way of life. And it's, it's not a way of life and it's not acceptable. There are people with mental illness that need help and we're turning our backs on them. And um, 
I wish I had all the answers, but what we're doing is not the answer. How, how does this impact you and your family and your employees? Well, our business is down over 60%, and it's because people are afraid to come here. They're wondering if their car can be left outside unlocked or, or locked even and without a get window or something getting smashed. And why, you know, why do you want to subject yourself to this when you live out in Holiday or you live out in Daybreak or you live out in West Jordan or you know, West Valley City? Why do you want to come down here and, and, and put up with this kind of stuff that's so unpleasant? And these people, they're very confrontive and combative. You know, one of our ladies came last week and the woman standing by the front door attacked her verbally and started screaming at her, that's my stuff, get away, you know, just acting crazy. Why is she out on the street if she can't, you know, behave socially? You can get a picture of this fellow that is a regular down there. And that guy is dangerous. Don't say one thing to him. He's swinging at you. You know, and, and unfortunately, we get familiar with who the bad ones are. It's it's a problem. It's a so is this a problem. daily occurrence? Every every day, every day. I came down on a weekend, and they figured out that we're not here on the weekend. And there were 28 people camped here. 28 people. Well, we'll move. Sorry. All garbage. Excrement everywhere. And there are no public bathrooms in the there's area. No, there's no facilities here. This is not a place to live. If you go to a state park, there's a restroom. You know, there's nothing here. They've destroyed this, you know, beautiful median that we have that we put in at the cost of, you know, a million bucks to make the city look nice when you pull in. And if you go one block to the east of us, Rocky, which you can do after you leave here, they're all packed over there this week and they'll be back here next week. And there's no alternative place that no. the mayor's provided for them. No. And do you see this as a city problem? It's a city problem. It's and, definitely a city problem. And is our city mayor doing anything to effectively alleviate the stress and the turmoil and the, the pain and anguish so many people are going through in this community? Yeah, she is doing something. She's going to lunch this afternoon at 1130.